All right, so here's another example with uh, rational functions, finding the derivative at a point. So uh, example two, big G of x is 2 over 3x plus 1, and we want to find the slope of the curve y equals g of x when x equals 1. So what does that mean? Uh, remember a few videos ago, we talked about how uh, the slope of the curve, that's the same thing as the slope of the tangent line, which is just the same thing as the derivative. So uh, just like all the questions we've been looking at so far, this is asking us to find the derivative. Uh, and at this, in this case, it's when x equals 1. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so what we want to do is find g primed of 1. All right. And going back to our definition, that's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of g of 1 plus h minus g of 1 divided by h. All right. So here, uh, g of x is a rational function, uh, and it's a little more complicated than the first one we looked at. So uh, the algebra is going to be a little bit messier, but that's okay. The idea is still the same. Um, so let's first go ahead and figure out what's g of 1 plus h and what's g of 1. So we'll come up here. Uh, g, let's go over here. Uh, g of x is 2 over 3x plus 1, so g of 1 plus h is going to be 2 over... 3 times the quantity 1 plus h and then plus 1. All right, so we just want to expand and simplify that. So when we do that, we're going to get uh, 2 on the top still. And then here, this is going to be 3 plus 3h plus 1. So let's go ahead and write that as 3h plus 4. All right, so that's g of 1 plus h. Now, how about just g of 1? So that'll be a little bit simpler. Uh, g of 1 equals 2 divided by 3 times 1 plus 1, which is just uh, 2 over 4, or in other words, 1 half. Okay, so g of 1 plus h is uh, 2 over 3h plus 4, g of 1 is 1 half. Let's go ahead and uh, put those in here. So then this is uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 over 3h plus 4. Uh, and then this was going to be minus one half, all right, all divided by h. Okay, so we'll do the same thing we did in the last video. Um, so again, we could just ignore this h here and get a common denominator for these guys here because we want to clear the complex fraction, right? We want to get rid of the complex fraction and simplify so that we can eventually cancel this h. So we can get a common denominator up here or uh, doing what we did in the last video. Here's 3h plus 4. Here's 2, so let's multiply the, uh, the big top and the big bottom by 3h plus 4 and then times 2. So we're going to do it like that, uh, 3h plus 4 and then times 2. And again, the reason we do that is because this is uh, automatically going to kill these denominators here. And that's the idea, that's what we want. Okay, so um, I guess there's room down here. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of, uh, let's just show it in detail again, just so it's easier to follow along. So this is 2 over 3h plus 4, and then this is going to be multiplied. So we'll distribute this through to the first term, and we're going to have 3h plus 4, that's a 4, and then 2, all right? And then minus 1 half uh, times the same thing here, 3h plus 4 times 2. Okay? Uh, and then on the bottom we have h times all that same stuff. 3h plus 4 times 2. Okay? So uh, what's happening now? 2 over 3h plus 4 times 3h plus 4 times 2. So 3h plus 4s are going to cancel. That's fabulous. Uh, 1 half times stuff times 2. So this 2 and this 2 are going to cancel. All right. So uh, now, let's go ahead and come back up here, and we'll get all this stuff out of the way. We're going to need a little more room here, so let's just get rid of that too. Okay, so um, coming up here, what are we going to have? We're going to have equals limit as h goes to 0 of what? Uh, what do we have left? Here's 2 times 2. So that's 4, and then we have minus uh, the quantity 3h plus 4. So we have uh, 4 minus 1 times the quantity 3h plus 4. And then on the bottom, 
we still have uh, h times 3h plus 4 times 2, right? So uh, this times 1 here, you know, that came from uh, this here, from the 1 half. Um, but, you know, when you multiply by 1, that's just like doing nothing, right? So let's just uh, ignore that. All right, so we have 4 minus this quantity here. So now what we want to do is uh, distribute this minus sign through. So we're going to have equals limit uh, as h goes to 0. Again, uh, don't forget the limit part. You've got to have that in until the very end when you actually evaluate the limit. So you want to make sure to carry that through all the way. Uh, so this is going to be 4 minus 3h minus 4. The bottom stays the same for now. Okay. So this is good because now uh, 4, blah, 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 minus 4, so those are going to cancel. And uh, now what we have is, uh, let's erase this arrow line that I drew for some reason. Um, now we have equals the limit as h goes to 0 of negative uh, 3h over h times 3h plus 4 times 2. So actually uh, this h we can now cancel with this h. So all we have left is negative 3 over 3h plus 4, and then times 2. All right. So that's wonderful. Uh, now we can do direct substitution, right? Because we've uh, canceled this h out. Okay, this h down here was causing us problems, and we've now gotten rid of it. So when we do direct substitution, what do we get? Uh, we get negative 3 over 3 times 0, okay, 0, 3 times 0 plus 4, uh, which is just 4 times 2. Uh, in other words, negative 3 over 8. Okay? So, uh, g primed of 1 is negative 3 over 8. In other words, uh, the slope of the curve y equals g of x uh, when x equals 1 is negative 3 over 8. Okay? So, uh, if you were to graph this function, um, and if you were to graph the tangent line at the point where x equals 1, that tangent line would have slope negative 3 8. Right? And we also say that the slope of the curve uh, is negative 3h there. So that's example 2 for rational functions.